All right, guys. So I'm going to be talking about um, Daredevil and Echo. This was another comic that was actually sent to me yesterday by my good friend Chris. Chris, thank you once again uh, for the uh, comic as the other and the others, as well as the others being sent. And yeah, so this is part of the Marvel Hall. And you may be thinking you really just read that in under 24 hours. And to that I say, yes, I motherfucking did. Um, and yeah. So Daredevil and Echo. This is basically, uh, this comic is a four-issue miniseries. It was actually, it's that technically it collects five com, it, like, it's the four-issue miniseries for this comic and da and Electra number 100, which I'm not going to really talk about Electra number 100. It's just a collection of stories and it doesn't really pertain to anything in this comic. But basically, this story is a four-issue miniseries that was actually meant, I guess, to help promote, um, Echo as a character, because we do know, obviously, she's getting a, a show very soon, so this was meant to, like, give more of the character. Plus, this was also written by Taboo. Taboo is one of the members of Black Eyed Peas. He also has been writing some comics here and there. Um, he helped, uh, I think he helped co-create the Spirit Rider, and, but he's known for making the new Werewolf by Night, which was more of a, uh, Nava, uh, it was more of based off of Native American lore. And they have done nothing with that character, I think. I don't think they've done anything with that character as of late. Anyway, so this so this story, what is Daredevil and Echo? Well, this is set so nebulously in the Chip Zdarsky run. We know that because Misk, um, Fisk is no longer uh, mayor of New York. We also have another thing of Elektra is sharing the Daredevil title. Plus... This also talks about some stuff that happened with Echo, part of Jason Aaron's run with the Avengers. For those who don't know, Echo was a member of the Avengers as well as the owner of the Phoenix Force, but that went away. In fact, they barely bring that up in here, where they're like, yeah, Echo, weren't you the, uh, uh, possessing the, uh, didn't you uh, have the Phoenix for a bit? And she's like, yeah, it was weird. Um, anyway, so what is this story? In a nutshell... This comic is basically Daredevil teams up with Echo to battle a cosmic entity and the Demo Goblin while also tying back all the way to Five Points New York with their ancestors in an Assassin's Creed type story. I'm not joking, that's the story. So, let me back up. So the story is, is that there are um, a series of murders um, where the these victims are having like a pound of their body and parts of their organs removed. Daredevil, it's happening in Hell's Kitchen, and Daredevil finds a connection with Echo. After finding her, the two team up to figure out what's going on. This leads them to discover that not only is it kids um, that are being possessed by a demonic entity, the person behind it is the Demo Goblin. Yeah, the Demo Goblin. You guys remember that villain? Yeah. Well, Demo Goblin's had a bit of a change as of late, where it's now a woman, and she now possesses, um... Uh... uh it's a fe Demo Goblins become a female because she now possesses um, a character from Cullen Bunn's Venom books that was known as... Well, no, it po she possessed Shriek, excuse me. I, I'm sorry, I completely forgot. Yeah, basically the, uh, Shriek has become the new Demo Goblin. Shriek as in the uh, Harley Quinn to Carnage's Joker. But yeah. Also, and also, on top of that, we also have a storyline where um, Echo and Matt's ancestors, who grew up in Five Points, New York, that's not a thing that was just for Gangs of New York, that's an actual thing, and they actually reference Dead Rabbits and the Bowery Boys were actual gangs in New York, it wasn't just for the Scorsese movie, um, and how it ties into this thing called the, the Blind God which is like this Lovecraftian eldritch monster that wants access into our world. I gotta be honest, this is actually kind of fun. For a four-issue miniseries, it's actually very well-paced. This was a very... Uh, usually, like, uh, these miniseries have this problem of it wraps up way too fast, or it drags, and then it wraps up at the last minute. Here, for four issues, that doesn't have the problem. Like, Taboo knew the story he wanted to tell, and he goes on his merry way telling it. Like, it's a very well put together story. I greatly enjoyed the idea of having these characters encounter, like, the supernatural force. And it's not that Daredevil and Echo, these two characters, Daredevil and Echo, haven't encountered um, unknown entities before. But yeah, they're, and they even say, like, we're not accustomed to this. 
It also, like, is kind of weird where it happens in Zadarsky's run, because isn't it like, Matt, aren't you supposed to be, like, leading the fist right now and have, like, be, like, called King Daredevil or something? But whatever, you don't care. It, it actually, like, it actually makes a reference to the book where it's like, this comic could just be happening anywhere. Just know that dare there are two Daredevils now. Um... I really do like also that Phil Noto, who does the artwork, is back again. And I really dig Phil Noto's artwork. It's, um, it has this very, like, clean look to it, but also there's something unnatural about it, if that makes any sense. I also love that, like, we, we bounce between the two eras, and, um, it's something that even Matt is like, I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Someone please tell me what, it, what I'm supposed to do with all of this I, I don't know. He's like, I don't know. The, um, the comic has some great stuff in here, and we also get an appearance of Dan Ketch Ghostwriter in the uh, second half of the four-issue miniseries. And it's it, even though they don't say it's Dan Ketch, it's clearly his motorcycle, it's clearly the jacket, and that design for the Ghostwriter. It's clearly supposed to be Dan Ketch Ghostwriter. A.K.A. Best Ghost Rider. Fight me on that. Uh, don't fight me on that. You know it's true. Um, all in all, it's a fun comic. It's nothing like uh, story altering or anything. It's just Taboo clearly wanted to write a story that was just so bizarre, but also so Daredevil at the same time. Also bringing up like Daredevil's... Um, I will say the fourth issue gets really bizarre. It gets really bizarre because, again, we're dealing with Eldritch Gods, but how it goes about it is weird. Um, and, but yeah, I thought it was a pretty decent book. I thought it was, um, I thought it was a pretty fun book of seeing these two characters work together because they do have each, they have, do have a storied history. And we also talk about like, um, Native American treatment during New York in, in the 1800s, which was fun fact, not good, but yeah. If you want to check out, like, if you want to read some a fun Daredevil story, I go. I'd say check this out. This is a. I would say like maybe get it at a discount price. Um, I don't know if anyone would be willing to play eighteen dollars because I don't think there's enough in here, even with the Electra issue one hundred, which is a collection of stories. But yeah, if you find it like a five dollar bargain bin, yeah, definitely add this to your collection. But anyway, you guys tell me in the comments below what did you guys think of it. And Chris, thank you once again for the book. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.